Let folly praise that fancy loves. I praise and love that child whose heart no thought, whose tongue no word, whose hand no deed defiled. I praise him most, I love him best. Oh, praise and love is his, while him I love, in him I live, and cannot live amiss. Love's sweetest mark, land's highest theme, man's most desired life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. By thy immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. My Mother, preserve me this night from mortal sin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. By thy immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. My Mother, preserve me this night from mortal sin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. By thy immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. My mother, preserve me this night from mortal sin. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is the 20th of December, and the fourth Sunday of Advent. And among the saints and martyrs who are commemorated today in the, the Roman martyrology, we have a saint called Saint uh, Philogonius, who, like our Holy Father, Saint Alphonsus, was a lawyer, but then left the world to serve God as, as an ecclesiastic. And the martyrology says of him, At Antioch, the birthday of Saint Philogonius, bishop, who was called by the will of God from the office of lawyer to the government of that church. With the saintly bishop Alexander and his companions, he engaged in the first contest for the Catholic faith against Arius. Renowned for merits, he rested in the Lord, and his feast was commemorated by Saint John Chrysostom with an excellent eulogy. So just one of the many saints today, of uh, the heroes, if you will, in the martyrology. So Saint Philogonius, pray for us. And in our congregation, today, Sunday, we keep in honor of all our holy patrons, while tomorrow, Monday, we keep, uh, we honor our holy guardian angel. So those are the, the noteworthy first points about today. Uh, so first of all, welcome to this, our, our broadcast uh, from our monastic island of Papastronsi to you, wherever you are in the world. The first of the notices is from the Glories of Mary by Holy Father St. Alphonsus. It's taken from uh, the first part on the Hail Holy Queen, chapter 1 which is uh, Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. And it's continuing with the, the story of Queen Esther. As soon as Asuerus saw Esther standing before him, he asked her with love what she came to seek. What is thy request? The queen replied, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, give me my people. For which I request. Asuerus granted her request and immediately ordered the revocation of the decree. And now, if Asuerus, through love for Esther, granted at her request salvation to the Jews, how can God refuse the prayers of Mary? Loving her immensely as he does when she prays for poor, miserable sinners who recommend themselves to her, and says to him, My King and my God, if ever I have found favor in thy sight, though the Divine Mother well knows that she was the Blessed, the Holy One, the only one of the human race who found the grace lost by mankind, well does she know that she is the Beloved One of her Lord, loved more than all the saints and angels together. Give me my people for which I ask. If thou lovest me, she says, give me, O Lord, these sinners, for whom I entreat thee. Is it possible that God should refuse her? And who is ignorant of the power of the prayers of Mary with God? The law of clemency is on her tongue. Each of her prayers is, as it were, an established law for our Lord, that he should sh show mercy to all for whom she intercedes. St. Bernard asks why the Church calls Mary the Queen of Mercy. And he replies that it is because we believe that she opens the abyss of the mercy of God to whomsoever she wills, when she wills, and as she wills, so that there is no sinner, however great, who is lost if Mary protects him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So that was the first, first notice on Our Lady. The second, continuing uh, from the readings we're doing from our Holy Father, St. Alphonsus, 
the one today, and as we will do on every Sunday, is from the Sunday Sermons of St. Alphonsus. And so this one is from uh, the sermon for today, the fourth Sunday uh, of Advent. And selection is taken from the second point, which is on the greatness of our obligation to love Jesus Christ. He who wishes, sorry, he who loves, wishes to be loved. When, says St. Bernard, God loves, he desires nothing else than to be loved. The Redeemer said, I am come to cast fire on the earth, and what will I but that it be kindled? St. Luke. I, says Jesus Christ, came on earth to light up the fire of divine love in the hearts of men. And what will I but that it be kindled? God wishes nothing else from us than to be loved. Hence, the Holy Church prays in the following words. We beseech thee, O Lord, that the Spirit may inflame us with that fire which Jesus Christ cast upon the earth, in which he vehemently wishes to be kindled. Ah, what have not the saints inflamed with this fire accomplished? They have abandoned all things, delights, honors, the purple and the scepter, that they might burn with this holy fire. But you will ask, what are you to do, that you too may be inflamed with the love of Jesus Christ? Imitate David. He says, in my meditation, a fire shall flame out. Psalm 38. Meditation is the blessed furnace in which the holy fire of divine love is kindled. Make mental prayer every day. Meditate on the passion of Jesus Christ. And doubt not, but you too shall burn with this blessed flame. Ah, if you knew the mystery of the cross, said St. Andrew the Apostle, to the tyrant by whom he was tempted to deny Jesus Christ. O tyrant, if you knew the love which your Savior had shown you, has shown you, by dying on the cross for your salvation, instead of tempting me, you would abandon all the goods of this earth to give yourself to the love of Jesus Christ. I conclude, my most beloved brethren, by recommending you henceforth to meditate every day on the passion of Jesus Christ. I shall be content if you daily devote to this meditation a quarter of an hour. Let each at least procure a crucifix. Let him keep it in his room. And from time to time, give a glance at it, saying, Ah, my Jesus, thou hast died for me, and I do not love thee. Had a person suffered for a friend, injuries, buffets, and prisons, he would be greatly pleased to find that they were remembered and spoken of with gratitude. But he should be greatly displeased if the friend for whom they had been born were unwilling to think or to hear of his sufferings. Thus frequent meditation on his passion is very pleasing to our Redeemer, but the neglect of it greatly provokes his displeasure. Oh, how great will be the consolation which we shall receive in our last moments from the sorrows and death of Jesus Christ, if during life we shall have frequently meditated on them with love. Let us not wait till others, at the hour of death, place in our hands the crucifix. Let us not wait till they remind us of all that Jesus Christ suffered for us. Let us during life embrace Jesus Christ crucified, let us keep ourselves always united to him, that we may live and die with him. He who practices devotion to the passion of our Lord cannot, be but, cannot but be devoted to the dolors of Mary, the remembrance of which will be to us a source of great consolation at the hour of death. Oh, how profitable and sweet the meditation of Jesus on the cross. Oh, how happy the death of him who dies in the embrace of Jesus crucified. 
accepting death with cheerfulness for the love of that God who has died for the love of us. That's our Holy Father, St. Alphonsus. There's a line here which I find particularly striking. It says, Had a person suffered for a friend, injuries, buffets, and prisons, he would be greatly pleased to find that they were remembered and spoken of with gratitude. It seems like we need to be quite maybe hard-hearted uh, to have someone that did this for us. We really did it. Someone we knew that did it for us and not remember it and be filled with gratitude. You know, if someone they took, stepped in front of you, ran in front of you to take a punch or even a bullet, our whole life we'd remember them and be full of gratitude. Or even something less than that. There's something which a friend of mine did for me once, a very generous act which I've, it doesn't quite make me choke up, but every time I remember it, 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 makes, me, it makes my heart warm. And I feel very grateful. Uh, and it's, it's nothing for me, but just for, for him, really, that he, he was so generous. He, without telling the whole story, he, was only, he only had a few hours' notice, but he took a, a week's off of vacation from work, and he drove basically coast to coast across the country with me. And it was just to keep me company and safe. And he didn't have to do it. It was just a, a generous act on his part. And it's something which I've, I've used sometimes even in my meditations, just in the sense of uh, to remind me of uh, what, what a charity for our neighbor should be like, and also kind of as a stepping stone to think of, well, how much, how much grateful love should we have to our Lord for everything he's done for us. And memories like this are um, they're important. And we remember them especially because they happen to us. It's people that we, we knew, that we see, that we can talk to. And that's why meditation, as our Holy Father, St. Alphonsus, just mentioned, is so important. That unless you meditate upon what our Lord has done for us, his, his incarnation and birth and infancy, his passion, how he remains with us in the Blessed Eucharist and, and comes into us in Holy Communion. All these, these proofs of his, his unbelievable love. It can be something which is, is more abstract. You know, it's something maybe that you can think about, but if it's just a, a sort of passing thought that doesn't, isn't made really internalized, if you will, it can be just like, like something you've read in a book. And that's... That's you, just, you can say, well, that's wonderful. It is wonderful, but it doesn't get much far beyond that. It's not where it's really, you know, where it melts your heart, so to speak. Because when someone does something very kind for you, you're just amazed that, oh, <laughs> look what they've done for me. And all of whatever a man can do for us pales in comparison to what our Lord has done for us. Um, and so this, this advice of, of meditation, especially on the passion of our Lord, where, where his love is so evident, but also in, in his infancy, especially in this time, where you see that he's, he's come and made himself entirely vulnerable and weak uh, and lovable. He's not, he's not fearful at all. He just comes as, a, as an infant to be loved. But if we don't think of that, if we spend the, all of Christmas thinking about our the gifts and uh, the the meals and whatever else may may occupy our time. It's not a bad thing to do that for, for the sake of fraternal charity, etc. But the main thing is to is to think of our Lord. That's what He wants. He wants He's instituted these feasts in the church to inflame our hearts with love for Him, according to the mystery of this of this feast. In this mystery, it's the infancy of our Lord. So, this advice of our Holy Fathers is. Very practical. That we should should meditate and make those mysteries really internal, where we we really believe it, and not only believe it, but and filled with that grateful love. And as as the quote says, 
that the person who suffered these things would be greatly pleased to find that they were remembered and spoken of with gratitude. So when, when we internalize this and meditate upon it, we'll both remember with gratitude, but we'll also want to, to speak with gratitude and with conviction so that that love is not only something which we have, but we want to enkindle in the hearts of others. Like our Savior said, I've come to cast fire on the earth, and what will I but that it be kindled? And so, as he came to spread his love, so we too uh, should be, as the, some saints have used this phrase, I believe, apostles of his love. Today being the Sunday, as we always do, I'll read the, the text for the Mass, which is, as I said, the fourth Sunday of Advent. The Introit. Drop down, do, drop down, do ye heavens from above, and let the clouds rain the just. Let the earth be opened, and bud forth a Savior. The heavens show forth the glory of God, and the firmament declareth the work of his hands. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Drop down, do ye heavens from above, and let the clouds rain the just. Let the earth be opened, and bud forth a Savior. And the Collect. Stir up thy might, we beseech thee, O Lord, and come, and succor us with great power, that by the help of thy grace, the indulgence of thy mercy, may accelerate what our sins impede, who livest and reignest with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, world without end. Amen. And the lesson is taken from the epistles of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Brethren, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and the, dispenser of the dispensers of the mysteries of God. Here now it is required among the dispensers that a man be found faithful. But to me it is a very small thing to be judged by you or by man's day. But neither do I judge my own self for I am not conscious to myself of anything. Yet am I not hereby justified, but he, that judges, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge not before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels, counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise from God. Gradual. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, O Lord, and tarry not. Forgive the sins of thy people Israel. Alleluia. And the Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel. Uh, according to St. Luke. Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and Philip his brother, tetrarch of Ituria, and the country of Trachonitis, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilina, under the high priests Annas and Caiaphas, the word of the Lord was made unto John, the son of Zachary in the desert. And he came into all the country about the Jordan, preaching the baptism of penance for the remission of sins, as it was written in the book of the sayings of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways plain, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. And the Offertory. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. The Secret. Look down favorably upon these sacrifices, O Lord, we beseech thee, 
that they may be profitable to our devotion and salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, world without end. Amen. In the communion, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. In the post-communion, Having received these gifts, we beseech thee, O Lord, that with the frequentation of the mystery, the work of our salvation may increase. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, world without end. Amen. So those, those are the texts of the Mass of today, which, as I mentioned, is the fourth Sunday of Advent. So after these notices, but before the Mass, we'll have the Holy Rosary, and uh, then the St. Patrick's Breastplate, and the Prayers Against Satan, the Apostate Spirits. And after Mass, as usual, we'll have Thanksgiving for Holy Communion. And then for devotions, after the Angelus, we'll uh, do with the O Antiphons being sung at Vespers. We'll do that here. So we'll do the O Antiphon with the Magnificat and then repeat the Antiphon uh, sung. And then we'll do the, um, the little, ch- little crown of the infant Jesus. And then a devotion which we do here at this time of year on Friday mornings after meditation, which is called the Steps of uh, the, chi- the Holy Childhood of Our Lord. And then, uh, as time permits, I'd like to do also the Litany of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Uh, and then, as usual, we'll con- conclude with the night prayers of the monastery. And then, as we were doing uh, during November, but I'd like to keep up, a uh, sung uh, antiphon of Our Lady, so at this time of year, the sung Alma Redem Toris Mater, uh, with solemn tone because it's Sunday. So those are uh, devotions for tonight. A few words on uh, one of the texts from the Mass, uh, particularly the communion verse, which reads, Ecce virgo concipiet et pari et filium, et vocabitur nomineus Emmanuel. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. This is from the the prophet Isaiah. It's quoted in in St. Matthew's Gospel as well, but in Isaiah, our Lord speaking through through the prophet Isaiah, he prefaces it with these words. He says, Hear ye therefore, O house of David, is 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 it a small thing for you to be grievous to men, that you are grievous to my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. And St. Jerome, he comments on this verse, and he says about this line, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. He says, it ought to be something new and wonderful if the Lord himself is going to do it. But if it be, as the Jews will have it, a young woman or a girl shall bring forth, and not a virgin. What wonder is this, since these are words signifying age and not purity? So it's true, of course, that, that God normally works according to the laws of nature. And they're called laws because they're, they're constant and steady. But when he wants to make perfectly clear that he's the one doing the work, then he breaks those laws because he's the author of nature. And so... As the author of nature, he can break the laws of nature. And so th- he does this to make perfectly clear that it's not some, some secondary cause was, which is acting in whatever he's doing, this, this miracle. Because no mere man can work a miracle. And so it's a sign that only the Lord himself can give that a virgin shall conceive. It's like saying, uh, you can think of various examples, like a, a bird can fly without wings or a plant can grow without any water, or a man can think without a brain. All these things which, which naturally speaking, never happen. It's impossible for it to happen unless as God does it. There's a, uh, a miracle, a memorable miracle from Lourdes, which I can't remember all the details, but it's a, a man named Jack. And in brief, he, he loses the muscles 
he's a working man. He has to be able to use his arms. He uses the muscles to be able to raise his arms with strength, or even raise it all, I think. And he goes to the Lord's, and he's healed by Our Lady. And so he can, he can use his arms again, but perhaps the more miraculous part of this miracle is the fact that the doctors attested that the muscles that are naturally necessary, they're normally necessary for a man to be able to raise his arms, weren't actually regrown. He was just he just had the ability to raise his arm. So every time he raised it, it was a, a continuous miracle, if you will, of Our Lady of Lords. Uh, so there is it's that that fact that it's something which is completely against nature is it makes so clear the miracle. And so it's clear that the God, the author of nature, is causing the miracle. And one of the reasons why he why he does miracles is to testify to the truth of something. So in Lords. He does it to, to glorify his, his mother, uh, and, and Lourdes particularly also to, to testify the truth of and the power of her immaculate conception. But here, with this prophecy that we're talking about, he does it, he's, he, he works the miracle of, of making a virgin conceive and bear a son in order to give to the Jews a sign, to give the whole world, the house of David he's speaking to, but really to everyone, everyone who's attending, a sign of, of the coming of the Messiah, and also as a as a comfort, really, in their affliction, because at this time they're uh, they're being corrected, really, because of their sins. They're being invaded by uh, when Isaiah is speaking here. He's, when he gives his prophecy, he's speaking to King Akaz, king of Judah, and they're being invaded by uh, Samaria and Syria, and it's because of their sins, as we see in. The first chapter of Isaiah, but you see it throughout, really. But it's, it's spoken there very uh, poignantly. It says the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, this is the very beginning, which he saw concerning concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Isaiah, Jotham, Achaz, and Ezekias, kings of Judah. Hear, O ye heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have brought up children and exalted them, but they have despised me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the mass and the ass his master's crib. But Israel hath not known me, and my people hath not understood. Woe to the sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a wicked, a wicked seed, ungracious children. They have forsaken the Lord, they blasphemed the Holy One of Israel, they are gone away backwards. And it keeps going, compares him to a body that has no health, etc. And so they needed to be chastised, but our Lord doesn't want to break the bruised reed either. And so he comforts them with this. And it's here I think we can gain a lot of encouragement ourselves that we, we too are a, a sinful nation. We live in a sinful nation, and we personally also are just we're, we're laden with iniquity. Uh, we've so often failed our Lord. And yet, he will come to save us. As he says elsewhere, God himself will come to save you. And, and so this prophecy, you know, a lot of prophecies, they apply not only to uh, the first coming of the Lord, but also to the second coming. And I think in a way, I'm no prophet, but in a way this, this, this prophecy, prophecy about the virgin conceiving and bearing a son applies to the second coming in our, our own time as well. In a certain way, you know, the saints say that as God, as our Lord, chose to come through Mary in his incarnation, so he chooses in, in every way that he comes to come through her. And so we can take, I think, a special comfort that although the world is so steeped in iniquity, it seems, especially these last few centuries, ever since the Enlightenment or whatever point you want to, to draw it from, just getting more and more wicked and with less and less human hope of, of salvation. At that very time, we've seen the, the apparitions of Our Lady increasing. It's especially in the last few centuries that she keeps coming to us and giving us, giving us the rosary, uh, giving us the miracles of, of Fatima and Lourdes, etc. To encourage us to know that uh, she's there, and she will bring forth her son again, both in our own hearts and in our time. That he's, 
you know, in, in Apocalypse it says that she brought forth the man-child who will rule the nations with a rod of iron. Christ is in control. It's not these, whoever's running the world. They think they're in control. They think they've got, got it in the bag. But they don't. Our Lady will crush the head of the serpent once again. And so, as our Lord worked this miracle to show that uh, it's, it's no man working, that he, w he himself will give a sign. So we need to trust that he will come to save us and to glorify himself and Our Lady. Uh, and we should take, especially that, that, that promise that the Lord will come and we should call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Because if God is for us, as St. Paul tells the Romans, who can be against us? And so we end with these words, uh, there's a few lines after that in the 8th chapter of Romans. Who then shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or persecution, or the sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are put to death all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But in all these things we overcome because of him that hath loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor might, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able, able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. O Mary, Virgin most powerful, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We'll have the Holy Rosary in a couple of minutes. Angelus Domini Nunciavit Marie, et concepit de Spiritus Sancto, oremus, gratiam tuam quesumus Domine mentibus nostris infunde. Ut qui angelo nunciante Christi filii tui incarnationem cognomimus, per passionem eius et crucem ad resurrectionis gloriam perucamur, perium dem Christum dominum nostrum. Amen. Divinum auxilium maniat semper nobiscum. Amen. Let folly praise, but fancy loves. I praise and love the child whose heart no thought, whose tongue no word, whose hand no deed defiled. I praise him most, I love him best. Oh, praise. As 
strong he can as God he loves to Joyful 